Hi, my name is Tarun Thakur. I'm a Principal Product Manager in the Data Domain Product Management team of the BRS division here in EMC. In this session, I'll be presenting Data Domain Retention Lock software that provides secure data retention capability on the archive data that is stored on the data domain. What I mean by secure retention is the ability to lock your archive data stored on data domain for a specific period of time such that the integrity of that archive data is not compromised. Before I present to you data domain retention lock software, let's look at a typical archiving environment. Let's look at typical secure retention policies and processes that are done today in the industry. In your environment, you have, I'm sure you have primary storage systems, which is where you house your highly transactional applications like Microsoft Exchange, file shares, or SharePoint data. So you have files, you have emails, and other data types that are stored on your primary storage system. And based on the ar soft archiving policies that you have configured on your archive software or application, the archive software takes the data from your primary storage system as it meets some of your policies and writes that data to a backend archive storage. And that's it, it's very straightforward. The data sits on a primary storage system. It resides at the right place, given its highly transactional nature. You have invested in an in a application environment such that the data as it ages or as it meets some of your policies is written to an archive storage. And the first question that we early on said we'll try to answer is, why do customers archive or why do you archive? And, and the answer to that is also very straightforward. First, you know, your data is aging. I, I, I have emails or my files or my SharePoint data sitting from five years or three years still available. But as the data, as the time goes by, your data ages, right? And one of the characteristics of as the data is aging is your access patterns for the data goes small and small and less often. Very simple example, I get an email, let's say start of the quarter, January 1st, I'm gonna work on it, I'm sure I'll have to go back to it for the next 30, 60 or 90 days, but after that, I'm not gonna go back to that email, it'll be highly, very less likely that I'll have to go back to that email. Yet, because of the internal IT policies, corporate policies, or you know, based on the industry you're working in, like financial services, you are regulated by certain compliance standards, you cannot delete that data. And so data deletions continue to go down and down, thereby leading to a continuous growth in your archive data. So that's it, you're archiving because you don't want to keep investing in primary storage system. The data as it ages does not belong. It's not cost effective to put it in primary storage. You move that data, you cannot delete it. So you archive the data to a backend storage. Now that we understand that, let's look at what are the basic requirements or fundamental requirements from an archive storage sol solution. And there are three. One, retention periods. As I said earlier, the retention periods or the data is not allowed to be deleted. Thereby, it has a, con it, it has a connotation where the retention periods are longer and they also include data types which are outside of your standard traditional files and emails, like data sitting on SharePoint. So your, retention, so your archive storage needs to have the capability to allow you to store multiple retention periods and for various archive data types on the same system. Second, application integration. You have invested in an archiving software. You want an archive storage solution that can very easily integrate in your, in your archiving application infrastructure. You don't want that churn because of a backend storage in to, to go back up the chain. And finally, you know, from a data domain perspective, we have seen how our customers have really enjoyed the deduplication benefits in their backup environments. And what they've come back and told us is, is look, I really want deduplication technology to help me meet my other broader needs outside of backup. And that's where one of the fundamental requirements of archive storage is as well, to leverage the deduplication technology, to leverage the inline deduplication benefits to, to reduce your archive storage growth by substantive levels. Now let's look at data domain retention log software and how it helps you to meet the archiving requirements and especially the secure retention requirements of the archive data. Um, so data domain retention lock, as I said, it, it, it is a, it's a piece of software that can be deployed on data domain systems to meet your secure retention requirements. And data domain retention lock software comes in two additions. One, retention lock governance, and second, retention lock compliance. 
Retention log governance is really for those environments where the administrators want to be a little bit careful when they're you know, doing the day-to-day -day operations on the archive data stored on data domain system. Or you have internal IT policies that require you to maintain your data for a certain period of time, yet those policies evolve and are very flexible with the changing business needs. So you want a ability to lock the data, but then have the ability to extend the retention period if it is required. So for, that, for those requirements, you have retention log governance edition. And the second, which is a brand new edition, which will be launching with data domain operating system 5.2 release, is retention log compliance edition. And it's really meant for those environments or for those industries where you are regulated, the customers are regulated by federal regulatory agencies like SEC Securities and Exchange Commission, like SFTC, when it's US, or international standards like ISO or MOREC. So again, locking of data at, um, and, and in, the, in, the, in, in line with the retention requirements of a compliance standards like SEC, like CFTC when it comes to US and many more, like HIPAA, like Sarbanes-Oxley, and international standards like ISO, like MOREC, and others like those. Um, now, let's look at retention log software in the context of a data domain system. And, and um, you know, you, you have a data domain system, in, you may have a data domain system in, in your environment where you're already using it for your backup data needs. You are, you, you are, you're using data domain system, you have an M3 spawn, let's say you have an, you have an M3, uh, which is again a, a, a construct of data domain to carve out a namespace out of a bigger namespace. So it's just a logical partition of data domain file system. You're using that to store your backup data, and now you want to start archiving data on data domain. Very, it's, it's very straightforward. You take another entry or another logical partition from data domain file system, and you write archive data to that, or you store archive data. And remember, as we shared earlier, archive data is really the data which has been tiered off or archived by the archiving application from your primary storage. So it is the primary copy of the data. So now that data is stored, now how you know let's look at the retention log software, how you can use it to meet your retention requirements. And there are essentially three or three key features that I would like to highlight with you. First, retention periods. As we as we discussed earlier, customers look for look for a, a, a capabilities in a software that can allow them to store the archive data for longer period of time, as well as store various different types of archive data on the same data domain system. So you want to, you want a capability where you can store files, let's say you want to archive file data, which meets governance standards, but you have emails that you want to archive or email archive data, which really has to meet compliance standards. And so you can store on data domain system, you can store both governance and compliance um, on the same um, data domain system just on different entries because entry is basically what your logical partition is. So, so you can imagine having a setup or a configuration deployment such that you have backup data which is already residing on your data domain system and now you want to store governance and compliance data on your data domain system. Second, is the ability to integrate in your environment. As we said, customers want archive storage to easily integrate in their archiving in application environments. And we have, from, from very early days of data domain, we have had industry standard protocols like NFS, SIFS, and, and backup protocols like BTL and our uh, industry leading protocol DD Boost. So uh, you can use, you know, most of the archiving applications speak SIFs. Customers want to remain with industry standard protocol. And you can, as I said earlier, you can take an M3, you can spawn a SIF share and store and give that SIF share to your archiving application, which will use it to store the archive data. And third, which is, uh, you know, the, the capability to take the archive data that you're writing to your data domain system and the ability to replicate to the destination system for your disaster recovery needs. Um, data domains, data domain replicator software is, is a very, very powerful piece of software. Remember, we do inline deduplication. So data that we get, we pack it into small segments and store it out in data domain system, which data domain replicator software uses in a network efficient way so that we are not sending huge chunks. We, we do it in a very, very network efficient way. And for, as, as it comes to archive data or data which has been locked, 
or replicator software takes the data archive data which is locked and the attributes like the retention period and replicates that to the destination data domain system. So to summarize, to, 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 to wrap it up, um, you know, there are, there are three points that I really want to drive. The first, multiple retention periods and co-location. You can use data domain retention lock. We apply you at a file by file level. So you have a lot of control of what files and what retention periods. You can co-locate with your backup data and you can co-locate both governance and compliance on the same data domain system. So you don't, you don't need separate data domain systems or you don't need separate systems to house your uh, archive data based on your retention periods. It's all on a single uh, system. Second is, is industry first. As I said, we are launching uh, retention lock compliance with a brand new addition from data domain. It'll, once, once it is deployed on data domain system, it enables data domain to be the industry first inline deduplication device for, for backup data and archive data that has to meet compliance standards. And third, as I said, archiving can be deployed on any data domain system from low end of our line 160 to our high end of the line 890s. Again, and that applies to data domain retention log software as well. You can deploy the data domain retention log software on, on all the data domain systems based on your environment. So with that, I, I, again, there are three questions we try to answer, uh, and I hope this session was helpful. One, why do you archive data? Second, what are the requirements of an archive storage solution? What requirements do the archive storage solution have to meet? And third, how does retention log software help you meet? What are the key features? And how does it help you meet the retention requirements of your archive data? Thank you very much, and I, and I hope you enjoyed the session. Have a good day.